and welcome to Amy Howard's channel. I'm Linda from Remade with Love. You can find me on Facebook and YouTube or on Linktree at Remade with Love. Today, I'm going to show you a project that I've been thinking about because I found this sweet little frame. It actually framed something that my grandmother made um, many years ago. Now this frame is probably from about the 30s or the early 40s. Um, and although it's sweet, I think I can reuse it, repurpose it into something else. The other inspiration for this was Amy's new French Ram stencil. It's a tri-mesh stencil and it's brand new. And for those of you who would like to perhaps win this, please tag three friends and share this video and you'll be in the running for uh, a drawing for this stencil to be your own. So get tagging and sharing. So let's get started. Obviously, the first thing I start with with anything is with Amy Howard's Clean Slate. If you haven't used this product, it's wonderful. I use it on everything, even things that I'm not going to repaint and reuse. If I want to get the surfactants off, all the grease and the grime, I use that. So I've already done that to cut down on time. I cut out a new piece of chipboard. The, the picture that was in it was so deteriorated, I need, needed something else for the backing of what I wanted to do, my stencil. So the very first thing I'm gonna do after I've cleaned this with Clean Slate is I'm going to paint it with Amy Howard's One Step in Linen. So you can kind of see the color there. It's a little bit of an old fashioned color and it's right what I was looking for. First of all, with One Step, um, it's a wonderful chalk-based paint, not chalk-based, it is chalk paint. And it has very simple, natural ingredients in it. It is called one step, but it may take more than one coat. So I'm with the first coat, I'm not worried about direction that I'm painting. I'm trying to get 100% coverage. I can see with the dark background, I probably will need another coat on here. So I'm just going to Put it on with my brush. It is self-leveling, so I'm really not going to be that worried about um, what happens to the, the paint strokes because they will be disappearing in a short while. But I wanted to get this on so that it could start drying as we're going through a few other things. So. There's one coat. I'm going to put this to the side and put my paintbrush to the side and we'll do the next step, which is along with this sweet little frame, I wanted to add a little bit of interest because the inside is going to have um, just kind of a, an old world um, picture in it. I wanted the frame not to be so plain. So we're going to use Amy Howard's resin. This is her acrylic glacier resin. And this is part A and part B. It comes in two parts. You mix them together, the resin with the hardener, which is part B, and they'll become a hard decorative piece that you can put on here. And the mold that I'll be using is Amy Howard's new mold, which is antique it's her antique mold so it has a couple of different um, types of detail that you can um, make with the molds and then apply it to things so i will show you i'm going to move this up a little bit i am working on a plastic surface plastic or um, silicone is what's best to work on because otherwise you'll have goopy messes. So make sure you protect your surface, make sure you protect your hands. This can be very sticky. Make sure that you use a well ventilated room or are wearing some kind of breathing mask. You want to, uh, it's not a strong smell, but it does creep up on you and it is chemical. So you wanna go ahead and, and watch your intake of that. Okay, so for part A, 
I'm going to add about 50% and part B, the hardener, I'm going to add 50% as well. The part A is very thick and gloppy. Part B is very thin, so you have to be careful. Uh, you can use a measuring cup. There are silicone cups that have measurers with them. Um, be very careful when you measure. I eyeball it. And actually, you'll notice I put in a little more resin than I did the hardener. And in this case, because I want to make a flexible mold, you can do that. You put in 10% more resin, so 60% resin to 40% hardener, and you will have a flexible and yet solid mold for your furniture or frames or whatever you'd like to have these decorative resins cover. You'll notice as I stir, it is becoming uh, cloudy. This is in part due to the two um, chemicals, the two resins um, mixing, you know, you're, you've got them mixing, but also because some air bubbles are getting in there. So you can use a, a heat source set on low. You don't want to have this fly all over the place if you apply it, but if you're using a blow dryer, keep it far away, but make sure the heat gets up there and you'll see them, the little air bubbles start to pop. You want to make sure you've got your air bubbles popped because this can affect the decorative mold. You might have a beautiful piece, but then a dip inside where an air bubble was trapped and never escaped. So I highly suggest that you use a heat source like um, a heat gun or a blow dryer set on low just for just a few moments to break up those bubbles. You can see those bubbles and hopefully you can popping in there. Can I swirl it just a little bit? So I've decided I am going to use in the antique decorative molds, the very top one or bottom one on your end here, um, which is kind of a twisted, looks almost like a, a rope of candy. Um, and all I do is squeeze the lip of the silicone cup and pour in. Now it will self level. So you do want to make sure you don't over pour. I usually stop just before the end and let it level out. You want to have a level surface that you're pouring on and a level surface that you'll keep it on to dry. It dries about between 10 and 14 hours. So because it takes so long, what I've done is, that is almost filled up there. And I'll put that to the side. Got about 20 minutes to get it poured once you've stirred your three minutes. So I've got it on this container and I'm going to keep it on this so that it's level. And if it spills out, it's going to be contained. I'm just going to move my things off. And because this would take 10 to 14 hours, I will go ahead and show you some finished pieces. They'll be flexible for um, at least 24 hours and what I've done for three of them is I already painted them with my linen color, but I wanted to show you what popped out. And that's what it looks like when it comes out. This does take paint. You can see that I've already started painting and put a first coat of paint on this piece. And this will make up my frame decoration. What I'll do next, I've cleaned my frame. I'm going to go ahead and paint it. So I'm just using a nylon brush with my one step in linen again. Normally it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to dry for one light coat. Um, but you know, you can give it an hour if you'd like. Depends on your humidity, depends on how thick you put 
the paint on. But don't be surprised if it's completely dry in about 20 minutes. So for this next portion, we'll need um, the color, um, oh gosh, it's hard to see. Can't Never Could. Can't Never Could in Amy Howard's Gel Art Ink. Because this is a stencil, I'm going to use Can't Never Could as, a, as the color on top of the linen one step. And of course I use her squeegee to put it on. I love this tool also. So before I actually open up the tube, I knead it a little bit in case it's been sitting a while and solidified or, or not solidified, but separated. Uh, and then I'm going to apply a little bit like I'm doing with my toothbrush. Put that to the side for the moment. And I am ready to get my tri-mesh stencil. Now I'd love to be able to only pull back so far, but because of the area that I'm doing, I have to pull the whole thing out. Plus I need to get this into a bath of cool water as soon as I can. Okay, I don't want it to stick until I get it. Kind of I'm in the dilemma of do I do the, the whole crown? Do I do the whole ram? I think that looks pretty good. Does that look? Okay, the crown is on there. Some of the words and the part of the lamb. So as I burnish the stencil on, I'm just pushing straight down and out gently. This tri-mesh stencil will stick and every place that you see the white will be the color that I apply. In this case, it's going to be black or can't never could. And every place that you see the black on the stencil or the dark gray, that's where it will come up the color of my panel board underneath. So I put some on my squeegee and holding it at about a 45 degree angle, I'm going to press and drag. And I'm going to do this as quickly as I can. You know, with the tri-mesh stencil, it's wonderful in that you have all of those little areas that normally on normal stencils um, wouldn't be joined and you have to go in with by hand and join them or it's a multi-step process to get it done. This eliminates all of that and it will come out beautifully. I might need some more. Whoops, I don't need more color. I just need to press a little bit closer. There we go. And you can see where you're not hitting. So and I don't need to block it on. So I just press and drag, press and drag. Yeah, I probably need just a tiny bit more. Just about that much more. Okay. I find that this is one of my favorite things to do, stenciling. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but if you haven't tried it, you've got to. It's, um, it's very rewarding. You get to see your end results almost immediately. And it looks like a million bucks. This piece is a little small. I'm, I'm jammed in here, so just be patient with me. This is user error here. I'm <laughs> just trying to get enough space. Wow, I love it. Okay, into the bath so that the gel art ink doesn't dry on the mesh. So give me a moment to splash it in there. 
And then to dry my hands off, what do you think? Wow. Look how crisp and clear this is. This is the French ram uh, in Amy's stencil. I love it. Oh, it looks so elegant, I think. And this is just part, part of it. Um, okay, so I'm going to put this up here to dry. I do not want to mess that up. Okay, guys. I am going to take a look at this. We're going to be applying these. I am, because I'm doing this so quickly today, normally I use E6000 or Gorilla Glue, um, but I want this to adhere right away and be able to paint. So I have, this came out perfectly as far as placement goes. Now this piece, the one that I just finished, had not been cut to size. Notice it's flexible. I've just measured it and measure again, hold on. Okay, it goes to, I take it to that first knot and there we go. So we've got that done. Um, these two are completely stuck on. The other two took a little extra time, but hey, you know, you run into some issues and we know exactly what to do. Just keep working until you get it right. Okay, let's take some more one step and do a quick la a layer of a one step on there. Good. All right, I'm going to hit that with my dryer and then we will do the next step. So hold on. So what do you think so far? Do you have an old frame at home that you can see yourself remaking like this? And what do you think about tone on tone? Now we use the same tone for the back of the ram. We've got a decorative piece running up and down, so it looks a little more fancy or <laughs> French, but the tone is the same for both. So that's what we're going to be tackling next. How do we give this a little pop, a little more depth, A little more interest for our framed piece. Now we could have stopped like that. That looks great, but let's keep going. So I'm going to be using Amy Howard's gold leaf and of course to get gold leaf to stick on something you have to use a special glue. And that special glue is gilding size. So size, wherever you put it, whoops, <laughs> wherever, good thing I'm wearing an apron. Wherever you put it, it's going to dry. It looks milky and bubbly. Those bubbles are just from shaking. 
but wherever you put this, it will dry clear and shiny. And once it has dried, it will, and, and becomes shiny, it is ready to take the gold leaf. So when it gets to that point where it's just a little tacky, it's a little bit, um, you touch it and it's not this liquid form anymore and it's not completely dry, it is tacky. It's called come to tack. And it's going to allow the gold leaf to adhere to my paint below. So I've actually taken a book, which is, I think it's like five inches by five inches or something like that. And I have cut it into strips that I will try and lay down and using the paper as a tool, I'll apply pressure and then take the rest away. Now you can see this gold leaf stayed attached. I can try and use some of that. And put that in there. Now, it's really important to burnish this. And because your fingers are rough to the gold leaf, you want to use something other than your fingers to press down on the gold leaf and kind of let it adhere more to the tack. You want it to really attach. Your next movement is to get rid of the excess gold leaf, the leaf that has not stuck to the tack. Remember, it is a little bit here and there, and I even put some on the inside. I just want this to be, at the very end, a hint, a peak of something that might have been a layer from another lifetime of this frame being used. Now you notice my soft um, chippy brush is perfect for this. So what I have next is, I have an artist brush, about a tablespoonful of water, tap water spine, and I have 
Toscana Milk Paint in Noir. Um, notice how it's kind of looking like a light gray. It's a black and it will go darker as I add it to the water. It will go lighter as it dries. This will give me a little bit of crustiness and a different color. And then I'll have my gold peeking through. I'm gonna mix this up. It um, comes in dry form. Milk paint has casein in it. It's been used for centuries as uh, a way to decorate furniture um, and other things of value. And it is in dry form because of the casein, which is a milk product. It's milk. That's why we call it milk paint. And um, it will uh, dry down to the powdery form again, because all we're doing is adding water to the milk and the pigment and all natural goodness of this so and I'm gonna go right over my finish so you might be thinking what are you doing well, trust me it's it's a different look but it's gonna be so much fun to see this when it's done well, milk paint is very very thin you can see it's it's very watery even when it's totally mixed and I have to keep agitating because those pigments in the bag will settle to the bottom. And it really should only be applied on the horizontal surface that's in front of you. Okay, so the next steps will be to wax. So the very first thing I'm going to put on is Amy Howard's Light Wax. And I just take a chippy brush. This is my dedicated wax brush. That's why it looks a little wonky. Swirl it around in the tin, the puck, and get some wax in there. And I wanna make sure it's spread out in the bristle. So I wipe it and then starting at a corner, I'm going to gently, like butterfly kisses, touch the frame. And I really want to do this because it's got to seal the, um, I've got to seal the milk paint. Milk paint is not sealed. It's not stable until it is completely sealed and wax is a sealer. I've decided I don't want it any darker. I don't need the, the dark wax on here, but I am going to put dust of ages on here. So while the wax is still a little bit tacky, it's not greasy to the touch, I grab my chippy brush and a product called Dust of Ages. If you haven't used this, I used to shy away from Dust of Ages because I'm like, oh my gosh, who would want their furniture to be dusty? Well, this just gives it a unique patina that is like none other. Um, and I really, let me move this so I don't get it on here. Um, I really enjoy kind of what this product does. It's in the little cracks and crevices, gives it another added layer of something, added layer of authenticity, let's just say. And it's not everywhere. It's not like I'm dumping all this dust on here and it's going to stay. So in just a minute, I'll give it time to sit in there and, and maybe even just kind of pounce it in there. But I'm going to take steel wool and it's four steel wool. So 
um, and I'm going to drag and buff, and I'll get a shine on here, a unique look that if you look at this side compared to this side, and I still have to clean it up, so bear with me, um, you'll see that the patina is just richer. You've got another layer. The, the gold is not as gold. It's more having that peeking out look that I talked about wanting in the very beginning. And just keep working this and you will have a fabulous frame that is just going to be wonderful for your new picture. What do you think? I mean, it's got a, a new old world look to it. And thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today uh, making, taking an old 1930s, 1940s frame and recreating it using Amy Howard products, including her new French Ram stencil. Remember, if you tag three friends and share this video, your name will be entered into a drawing for a free French Ram stencil, the new one from Amy Howard. So keep watching. Until next time, bye-bye.